Hello, Keith Haggard is here, the Gregory's Guru, back again for another installment of uh, learning how to work with the Gregory's Foods products. Today we're going to be talking about our natural bun line. And what we're going to do is we're going to start at the end of your production schedule, which would be basically break out or pan up for the following day. So I'm going to show you real quickly um, how to handle our frozen products and get them ready to be staged in the cooler overnight for baking the next day. And then we'll move on to some other segments on proofing and baking as we go forward. So the first thing is we need some clean pans and some silicone pan liners. So we're going to put the liner on the clean pan. Um, what I'm going to be showing you right now is our wheat, natural wheat hamburger bun. Most stores sell these in eight pound packages and they usually sell them as a cluster. So the first uh, method I'm going to show you is we're going to cluster three packages, three eight pound packages per pan. So as you can see, I don't put them so they're touching each other, but they're in close proximity to each other. It's important that we don't put too many packages on one pan because we want some nice airflow between the buns. It allows them to bake more evenly and it gets done in a proper length of time. So those are three packages. Now, let's say you're in a sandwich shop and you prefer that the buns not be clustered, that they're all individual rolls. You can also pan them up individually. We're going to space them a little farther. We'll go six by four. So we're going to use the whole pan when we do this. So basically you get the idea. Now when doing hot dog buns, same thing, we're going to put three packages on a, on a sheet pan. Typically they're sold in eight counts as well, so we're going to do three rows of eight, as you can see here. Now the hot dog buns will have a tendency to want to roll around a little bit, especially when they're frozen like they are right now. So you want to make sure in the morning you check these. If some of them rolled like that, you want to make sure that you straighten those out before they go into the proof box. Dinner rolls is another popular item. Typically these are sold as 12 count packages. So we're going to do three packages again and we're going to cluster them in two rows of six, leaving space in the middle for uh, allowing them to proof up, but also so they bake evenly. Now, cocktail buns or silver dollar buns, or whatever, there's other names for them, but that's the two most common. It's a smaller piece of dough. Typically these are, you want these to bake individually. So what we do here is we, we go four by nine and we kind of offset each row. So we put three dozen on a pan. And bratwurst buns are typically sold in six count packages. So just as the hot dog buns, we're gonna do three packages, but we're only gonna put six in a row instead of eight. It's a larger piece of dough, so it'll uh, end up proofing together and clustering quite nicely for it. Gregory's Foods uh, currently has 17 different products in the natural line, and there is talk of uh, adding more products as we go. Um, so once the products are all panned up and they need to go in the cooler overnight, we're going to use a rack cover of some kind. This is actually a disposable rack cover, um, which can be used, reused uh, several times. We're going to want to cover the package, or the rack, I mean, so that the buns don't get dried out in the cooler. Ideally, you want to put the Put the button in the cooler around 12 hours or less from the time you're going to want to put it in the proof box the next day. That's the ideal recommended length of time. It actually gives the buns a little bit of age. 
um, to give it kind of more of that natural fermentation you get from a, a scratch bundle. So those are going to get rolled off and put in the cooler. Um, if you are sharing the cooler with, say, the deli department, um, and they've got some uh, kind of pungent uh, products in there, such as red onions and whatnot, um, it's recommended that you try to keep the rack away from those products as the, those odors and uh, flavors can be picked up by the, the bun itself. But it is important to make sure that it's covered. That should help with that and kind of minimize that, that issue if you are sharing the cooler as well. So off to the cooler with this. And we'll be back uh, tomorrow and we'll pull them out and get them ready to be proofed and baked. Well, good morning. Gregory's Guru here again. It's already tomorrow. And I've got my rack of buns that I've pulled out of the cooler. I've got my proof box set at 95 degrees and 85% humidity or somewhere around there. And it's been uh, on for about 30 minutes or so. We've let the buns come up a little bit to temperature. And now we're gonna put them into the proof box. First thing we have to do is remove our rack cover. And again, these rack covers can be reused several times as long as they don't tear. So how do we know if the uh, proof box has the right temperature and humidity? Typically, uh, the temperature you can check with a probe. Um, as far as the humidity goes, it's a little more complicated at, at your bakery or at your uh, shop. Um, if you take your fingers and you can rub them on the bottom of the pan and you feel moisture, or if you wear glasses and they fog up, that's typically the right amount of humidity uh, for what you want in there. If there's not enough humidity, you won't feel any moisture on the bottom of the pan and your glasses won't fog up, and you want to try to adjust that. Um, a lot of proof boxes over time will get limed up, so you want to make sure that you do regular maintenance on this. It's a good idea if you can to have a water softener um, for the, the water that's going into the line, otherwise there's a tendency for it to get lined up. Now we've all ran into this problem. Let's say you come in the next morning and you don't have enough buns pulled, there's an order that came in late and you need more product. Um, with the uh, all natural buns from Gregor's Foods, you can take this bun and you can set it up the same day. Uh, we recommend that you thaw it at room temperature for 90 to 120 minutes. We also recommend that you use a rack cover so they don't dry out, um, if at all possible. Once the dough is thawed, then you can put it into the proof box. Um, typically, the buns will take 45 to 60 minutes, sometimes 90 minutes, depending on the kind of proof box you have. The ones that you break out the same day typically take a little longer than the ones that have sat in the cooler overnight. All right, well, we'll be back with you as soon as they're ready for the oven. Okay, let's get our buns out of the proof box. Now, typically they're not all gonna be ready at the same time. Our cocktail or silver dollar buns are ready first. How do we know when they're ready? Well, a good rule of thumb is they're gonna double in size, but a better method is called the dimple method. And that's where we're gonna put our pinky into the side of the bun, like this. And if it leaves an indentation and does not spring back, it's ready for the oven. If it springs back, give it another 10 minutes or so and check it again. Now a lot of times the dough is real sticky because it's in the proof box. It's a good idea to dip your finger in a little water and that way it'll lubricate it and when you put your, your pinky onto the bun it won't stick to it and it's a little easier to test. All right, we're gonna put this in a oven at 375 degrees. That's a conventional oven or a real oven. If you're using a rack oven, you're going to want to lower the temperature to about 360. If you're using a convection oven, you're going to want to bake those rolls somewhere around 335. Um, the smaller dough takes a little less time, probably around 10 to 11 minutes. The, the larger pieces of dough are going to go 12 to 13. All right, we've got our oven set at 375 degrees. You'll want to remember which shelf you started with here if you're using a conventional oven. I've got it set at shelf one. That way we know which rack to pull out first.
I stop the rack each time just to make sure that we don't have any catastrophes with the hands getting caught. I know some of you expert bakers would just go ahead and just keep going and never turn it off. Make sure and use a timer also. We're going to set it for 11 minutes. Okay, our cocktail buns are ready to come out of the oven. I've already pulled the first two shelves. Here's the third shelf. You can see they're nice golden brown. 11 minutes. Now, it's a good idea to check your oven from time to time to make sure that it's calibrated properly or that you know that it actually is in fact 375 or whatever temp you need. I use an oven thermometer to do this. I simply set it in the oven, turn the oven on, set your timer for about 10 minutes, and then check it and see if it's the same as your dial. If it's not, either call for service or make the necessary adjustments on your temperature so that you do get the, the optimum temperature that you're looking for. Three. Okay, I think the rest of our buns are ready, but let's check them. Again, we'll use the dimple method to check the buns. Here's our hot dog buns. You'll notice how they clustered together. Again, we're going to use a little water. Touch the side of the roll. It leaves a nice dimple shows that it's ready for the oven. Here's our wheat hamburger bun. Our white hamburger buns. And our dinner rolls. So off to the oven with those. Okay, we've got all the buns out of the oven now. The cocktail buns took right around 11 minutes at 375, and the rest of the buns took right around 13 minutes. You can see we got a nice golden color on them. They do tend to get a little browner quicker than uh, on a regular bun. The natural buns seem to color up a little nicer. So you'll notice we got nice clustering on these. Okay. We also have available visual method sheets such as this. They have pictures of what the rolls look like on the pan, what they look like when they're proofed, and what they should look like when they're fully baked. These are available on our Facebook page and will be shortly available at our website or you can ask one of your Gregory sales reps to bring some in for you. In addition to that, for those of you that have a little larger operation and you're looking to want to mix your own doughs, we have a natural bun base, both in white and wheat, that's available to make all these products. All right, we're, now we want to bring in an expert on what makes these buns actually natural. You know, what is it? What, what's going on here? What did we, what did we change so that we can call it all natural? Uh, what are the benefits of it and whatnot? So we've got Daryl, who's our director of R&D, that's going to answer a few of those questions for us. Come on in, Daryl. All right, how are you all doing? Oh, I, I should make mention that Daryl is also a certified master baker, and I think there's only, what, 80 or some of those? Well, 153 right now. 153 in the United States, so it's, uh, it's pretty rigorous to go through and learn all these things. So we're very fortunate to have him on staff here, um, developing all these great products. Um, so, Daryl, yeah. what makes this all natural? What, what's going on here? I mean, I went to baking school in the 80s and we had all kinds of stuff in our, our bakery that we were making that had all kinds of words I couldn't even pronounce. <laughs> what is that stuff? Well, <laughs> well, one of the things that we are concentrating on is the fact that the products that we use, all the ingredients that we use in these products, are derived from all natural sources. And the flowers themselves, 
are, are naturally based. They don't have added bromates and stuff to them so that um, any perceived um, notion about a clean label, we've taken all that out. So like our eggs are used without um, the, the silico aluminum sulfate in it. The, uh, the, we use enzymes instead of dough conditioners, uh, which are natural. And we use all wholesome ingredients, including a whole milk product in this to give it the clean taste and the, and the uh, shelf life that we need. So you get a better tasting product and shelf life. I've heard that you can get longer shelf life on it. Yes, with, uh, with the enzymes that we've added and the, the clean label ingredients, we were able to offer longer shelf lives, both in the post-bake and in the freezer. So for the retailers that need to keep the product in their freezers longer, we have longer shelf life in the freezer. And when they bake it, they can give more shelf life, uh, an average of a day to two more days on their shelf, and then the end user will then be able to get five to seven days, whereas before they only could get three on a normal product. So we used to give the, the buns three days in our retail shop, and then the customer would take a moment and only could get a couple, maybe three days more. And what you're saying is we can get maybe five days on your shelf in the retail setting, and then the customer gets up to a week at home. That's correct. Yep. That's amazing. So how does that work? I mean, doesn't it get all kind of hard and dry inside? Well, I mean, usually buns after a few days, they just get dry. Well, that's uh, the nice thing about using enzymes. You know, there's uh, currently, there's over 500 enzymes that have been isolated for industrial and food use. 28 specifically for food usage. We use four of them, four different enzymes, and they all function in a different way. The enzymes are all derived naturally from natural sources, like mushrooms, uh, things that are grown naturally in nature, isolated products. And they're, they're beautiful things because not only do they function in a product, they also are more healthy for you, okay? So there's enzymes to help the elasticity of the dough. There's an enzyme in here to help the softness of the dough. There's an enzyme in here that will extend the shelf life of the dough. And they all work together and the, the nice thing about enzymes is that you can put them all into the dough and mix them. And if they're not used, they bake out as protein in the bread. So, you know, it's, it's nothing wasted. And so we've made a cocktail of this enzyme derivatives, the four that we use, and we've got excellent results with it, including longer shelf life. I see that the bun, these particular buns, seem to get a lot more of a jump in the oven than what I'm used to seeing. That must be part of some of these enzymes. Mm -hmm. The enzymes will help the dough development and that's why the buns will get more volume. They have a nicer crumb structure. Uh, we do testing on our products all the time. Uh, we do crumb analysis on it. We do shelf life testing. We do mold analysis and um, we find that we've been getting excellent results with that higher volume longer lasting products. So with these enzymes, it sounds exciting. It sounds like maybe we should, you know, add more products. I heard we've got 17 products right now that are available in this all natural line. Yep, and we're steadily working on more. We eventually want to convert all of our products over to all natural. Well, that's great news. I think that's just what our customers are looking for. It helps with labor. We can make larger uh, maybe more packages at a time because we get more days on the shelf, yep. uh, which helps out with labor, but it also, the customer is going to have a better eating experience because their buns aren't going to get dry right away. I mean, I know it's just my wife and I that live at home and to buy eight buns, it takes, uh, it's going to take us a good week or 10 days to actually eat all those buns. So that's exciting news. Yeah, and it's also, you touched on a, a, a real quick segment there about the shelf life in the store. So if you're an in-store baker and you're having problems with shrink, having all natural buns will help you with the shrink factor. You can get extra shelf life so you don't have to necessarily stale out or shrink out the product that, you know, 
if you get an extra day shelf life on your shelf, you're reducing your shrink factors tremendously. So that's more your gross profit dollars in your pocket. Exactly. All right, well, I really appreciate you coming in today and helping us out with this segment and helping me with uh, understanding these enzymes. Yeah, no thank no you. No problem, thank you. All right.